The most important thing you need to know is that Trump invited all his supporters to Washington for this rally. Then when it got a little out of hand, he released a video on social media later in the day asking for people to go home. Please, we need, a, we need law and order. We need, you need to go home. So there, you know, that says it all. You don't need to l listen to the rest of this video. The rest of this video is just analysis. Greetings, friends. Just wanted to give my initial take on the storming of Capitol Hill by Trump supporters uh, today, uh, Wednesday, January 6th. Now, my initial take is, I, I can't, I don't quite know. I'm, I'm quite apprehensive, though, because it seems like a disaster that everyone said was going to happen. And, and uh, well, maybe not a disaster, but just not going to get Trump to stay in office. Uh, however, I could be wrong, because maybe with time, this will be a symbolic victory, because they actually storm this historic building, which, if I'm not mistaken, is it uh, based on Greek architecture, pagan Greek architecture? I could be wrong. I know it was built in the 19th century, the Capitol building, or maybe before that, I don't know, but, but I mean, they were inspired by that pagan build. And then they, uh, this white lady, Trump supporter, was shot, and I guess she was killed instantly, pretty much, from what I saw. So it's like you sacrificed a white woman in this pagan building to... But I don't mean to be reading, you know, too much into it. Uh, it could have a symbolic victory. I heard that, like, Nick Fuentes was in Nancy Pelosi's office. Now, I don't, I'm not confirming that, but if that's true, then, like, whoa, you gotta be careful, man. But I, 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 I support these people, but there's obviously a lot of cringe going along. There's a huge amount of cringe, boomer cringe going on. And I think the question is, what's going to happen over time? I mean, they're going to use this like Charlottesville, the media, to paint you as, as evil enemies. But they're going to do that anyways. So, I'm not saying this is good or not, but, I mean, I've been protesting in Canada against lockdowns. And we would never imagine ever, like, taking it to the violence level. Because you, you could get, like, uh, thrown in prison. They could arrest you, or, or even worse. And, but it's a bit different in the U.S. because you have more numbers on your side. Not that you ever have to have a complete majority, but you have more, more of that sort of people that are going to support the right-wing idea. So basically, the way I look at it is there's three kinds of warfare. There's guerrilla warfare, where you, you hit the enemy at their weak points. Like an example of this would be haggling over the mask in a corporate store making the employees spend extra time to ask you to wear a mask or to, or to deal with you because you're not, you know, you, you pick your battles, but you slow it down, you make it, you make it a headache for them at their weak point. That's guerrilla warfare. You, say, you can serve your main force. And then there's the second type of warfare is show of force. This is rallies, marches, any sort of public gathering in public. You're not fighting. You're, you're a peaceful demonstration, but you're demonstrating your power what you can do. And then the third type of warfare is standard warfare. These are just my own terms, so whatever, you know, I'm, this isn't perfect. Uh, standard warfare is number one, riots. Number two, organized militias. Number three, uh, convention, you know, tact like uh, tactical infantry, that, this, that sort of pattern. And then number four is uh, special ops, I think. And that would include like Navy, mil Air Force, all that stuff. Yeah, number three, I just said, was conventional military. Now, obviously, if we're trying to defeat the globalists, I don't advocate open violence, conventional military. Um, I mean, history may change. We may get to that day one time. But, but uh, right now, like in Canada, we're stuck, because we're outnumbered, and because of other factors, we're stuck somewhere between guerrilla warfare. I don't mean literal guerrilla warfare, but you know, you know what I mean. Cultural guerrilla warfare. That and a show of force, which is gather, rallies, all that sort of thing. We're stuck somewhere between there. Now, with the storming of Capitol Hill, now you guys are between uh, this show of force and actually going on the offensive into, into um, riot or, and I don't mean riot disparagingly, I don't mean that, but I mean if you're breaking down doors and if punches are thrown at cops, 
you are now at the level of a riot. I'm not saying that's always a bad thing. Generally, the riot is a negative word, I understand. But what else do you call it? You call it a mob? It's basically all negative. And the Christian worldview would say you're not really supposed to overthrow the state. I get that. I get that. That's a conversation we can have um, more in depth some other time. But you're, you're on the... You're in this uh, gray zone between show of force, which I think is good, and you, sh you ought to keep doing that. Rallies are good to build community solidarity, even if you're not going to persuade the politicians to change their minds. So I'm always, I think rallies are necessary and they have their place. But when you take it to the violent level, you got to think of what's the long-term strategy here. And I don't know. I'm not saying one or the other. I mean, it looks like some lady got murdered by, by uh, police there. And, um, but the media is going to spin it one way or the other against you, but they're going to do that anyways. And I mean, people would say, well, violence is inevitable. At some point or another, there's going to be violence. I think that probably makes sense. But you just got to make your own decision. I hope it turns out uh, well for anyone. But I'll just conclude by saying it may be a symbolic victory, just like, like storming of the Bastille. Not that I agree with everything about the French Revolution, but certain things have symbolic power, whether for better or for worse. And I think coming into this Capitol Hill building and right into their offices and right into the pol right up in front of the politicians themselves. I was like, wow, this is a new level of things. This is making your voice heard all right. Certainly a lot of cringe going on. Certainly a lot of bad optics, but I mean, can anyone really say that they didn't think something like this was going to happen? I don't think so. Hasta luego, amigos.